What's up guys, Alec on Cure here. Today I'm gonna tell you guys the biggest mistake that I've ever made in my training career. But before I do, I want you guys to take a guess and I'll tell you, I've been training for a while now and I've done a lot of dumb things. So you guys have a lot of stuff to choose from, but let me narrow it down for you real quick. And here are the top three choices, okay? Is it A, maxing out on squats every day for over 100 days, B, not performing Joel Seidman-esque style stability training, or C, eliminating sprint work and other movement-based work from my own programming. Now pause the video right now, leave a comment down below, and tell everybody what you think the biggest mistake that I've ever made over the course of my training career is, and then get back to the video and see if you were right. I'll be waiting for you right here. So what did you guess? Hmm? I ran my ass into the ground, guys. I'll tell you, I ran my ass into the ground. Squatting the maximum every day, man. I would stand up and my quads would just seize up on me, man. They would just freaking cramp. They would lock. But I kept on squatting, right? A little while later, I tore my labrum, but I kept on squatting. Squatted like 530 pounds in, in sleeves, 545 or 55 in wraps. I don't even remember. I front squatted like 450. I was strong as hell, man, but it was a dumb fucking idea. <laughs> or could it be option B? Could it be that I never tried to take out my own kidneys or gut shot myself with Joel Seedman's big swinging balls of doom? Brutality to the nether realm with you. You know, I've never done a push-up while dangling precariously from a resistance band, and I don't fucking squat with my eyes closed. I don't do eyes wide shut training. And, and you know, that stuff, it really could be the missing link for performance, man. It might be, I might could be the next Usain Bolt if I had only just listened to Dr. Joel. Or could it be option C? That for a long period of time, I basically stopped moving. I stopped running, I stopped jumping, I stopped cutting and, and sprinting and pivoting, I stopped playing sports, and instead all I did was lift weights. If you chose option C, then you chose correctly. And here's the thing, man. From about 2011 to 2016, basically the only form of physical activity that I regularly took part in was weight training. And like I said, I got really strong, right? I hit some pretty high level squats, some pretty elite squats, and I built a good base of muscle and general strength. But in the process, I lost something, man. I lost the snap in my step. I got slow. My movements became cumbersome and uncoordinated. My hips got stiff. My lower back started to get tight and it started to get sore. Now, Here's where the average person comes back and they tell you, right? They tell you that weight training destroys your joints and it makes you stiff and muscle bound and all that crap. But that's not what I'm here to tell you guys today. That's not what I'm gonna say because that's not what happened. Weight training in isolation does not cause any of that stuff. In my opinion, it is the absence of regularly engaging in normal unloaded human movement that does cause all of that stuff. Because the thing is, I could have been a normal sedentary American with a desk job who didn't lift weights and the same shit would have started to happen to me. I see it in my age cohort at this point. My, my hips and my back would stiffen up from sitting all day. I would get sore from doing nothing. I would have to, I would have to, uh, every time I stood up out of a chair and I would constantly remind you guys about how strong I was and how fast I was and how in shape that I used to be in high school. When, when I was 18, I could beat you in a foot race, man. I guarantee you if I was only 18 again, hey, I could bench press 400 pounds too, right? Never mind the fact that peaking at age 18 is a sad, sad thing. And I actually feel a lot better now at 33 than I did at 27, right? But the fact of the matter is, it's just that as we age, this is just kind of what happens. The joints can't take quite as much punishment as they used to. We don't feel quite as sprightly as we did when we were younger. For, for me, like I just mentioned, I would say that once I hit about age 26 or 27 was when I really started to notice some of the imbalances rear their head into the way that I was feeling 
from the way that I was training. It was too much balls out, overly heavy, low rep weight training. And while I could have modified the way that I was training in the gym at the time, just as an isolated variable, I think that that would have only accounted for part of the puzzle. And people like Knees Over Toes Guy and Barbell Medicine and even myself have demonstrated how weight training, when executed in the correct fashion, can actually be a highly therapeutic modality where certain types of pain are concerned. And I'm certainly not making this video at all to suggest that weight training is not an integral part of this training equation and of remaining healthy and strong and pain free as you age because it most certainly is, right? It makes the muscles big, it makes the muscles strong, it can strengthen and heal connective tissue, it can encourage joint mobility, it can make the joints stronger, it can make the joints feel better. But, and this is a big, big Kim K but, in the absence of movement, something is just missing man, right? I perform dedicated mobility work these days to encourage my hips to stay loose and to stay limber through flexion, extension, rotation, all that shit. But I didn't used to have any of these deficiencies when I was younger. And I will freely admit that some of them are compensations, compensations that were a direct result of the way that I used to train in the weight room. But I do firmly believe that if I had never stopped moving in the first place, that it would not have mattered how I was training for all those years. I still would have retained all of or most of that mobility anyway in spite of my poor training habits. Because there is simply no replacing movement, right? You can't really execute a proper sprint without moving the hips through moderate degrees of flexion, extension, and even adduction, right? Sprinting is a violent endeavor by nature, and the hips must be able to comfortably reach end ranges of movement in order to do it properly. Following that, supple hips are a good way to help keep the back pain free, along with having a strong back and strong abs, which comes from weight training. And so the whole thing just kind of becomes symbiotic. The point really is that movement-based training naturally encourages proper levels of mobility, proper levels of joint mobility. And so if you can retain these, the ability to perform these activities in an efficient fashion, to execute them in an efficient fashion, then in all likelihood, in the long run, you're gonna retain supple joints or, or in, even build more supple joints than you have now. And by having these supple joints, you're likely going to be able to move well and move pain-free for a long time. And I'm not by any means saying that you should jump into this kind of stuff full bore just right off the bat, not, not at all. In fact, if you haven't been running or jumping or moving in general, then you absolutely should not just jump into this stuff willy-nilly because it's not a fucking joke and you will just hurt yourself if you do that. So an adequate break-in period and adequate progressions from there in progressions of intensity are required. And one way that I like to kind of kick things off like this is by incorporating things like loaded carries and sled drags and resisted sprints or even running up a hill, right? These are all good ways to provide your body kind of with a middle ground between weight training and between movement training. They all kind of slow it down a little bit, which decreases the likelihood of you getting injured or just doing something stupid like falling on your face. As well, those sorts of exercises hit the muscles and they train the body in a way that traditional weight training does not and can not. And at the same time, they take place a little bit slower, right? Like I said, a little bit slower and a little bit less violently than the more intense movement-based work like max jumping or intense plyometrics or all out sprinting and so that can be a helpful a helpful middle ground a helpful break in and personally I think that these sorts of exercises should actually be a staple in the majority of people's training programs pretty much year-round right and then once you become comfortable moving slowly then you start trying to move more quickly and then maybe at that point something like moderate jogging or light sprinting would become a good option for you or maybe moderate intensity shuttle drills where you're cutting and pivoting or low level plyometric drills or low level jumping drills or whatever and then once you've kind of gotten that far where you can introduce those remedial versions of those exercises then it becomes without getting injured then it becomes very easy to gradually ramp up the intensity on the exercises themselves over a period of weeks and months until your body is 
ready to safely handle maximum intensity exertions, right? More intense plyometrics or full blown all out sprints. And again, man, I'm not making this video to suggest that anybody should ditch the weight room or ditch their heavy strength work or to suggest that weight training in and of itself is going to make you stiff and slow or muscle bound or any stupid crap like that or that it can't be used as a modality to heal pain, right? Because none of those things are true and I don't believe any of that stuff. However, I am making this video to suggest that these activities are actually symbiotic, right? They go hand in hand, man. They're freaking yin and the yang. They complement each other and they balance each other. So in the long run, if you continue to perform both of them with concerted effort and applied focus on both of them, then you'll be setting yourself up for the absolute best long-term outcomes, not just in terms of overall performance and body resilience, but also in terms of general mobility and just the ability to just do a whole bunch of different shit without being in pain. Anyway, I think that about covers it for today, guys, but I keep harping on about this balanced style of training, saying balanced in your training, right? Be sure to always keep moving and, and oh, if you want to look like a hybrid athlete, you got to train like a hybrid athlete and all that shit. So next week, I'm going to give you guys a sample program, a free program for exactly how to train like a hybrid athlete. And so make sure you check back in next week for that one. And that's a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I hope that you were able to take something useful away from it. Please remember to smash the like button before you go. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And leave me some love in the comments down below as well. Check out www www.oncareelitefitness.com for online coaching and training programs and keep training hard guys i will catch you all next time that's a fucking pr 10 yard fly it'd be either 0.87 or 0.88 something like that equivalent over 10 meters that is a 25 mile per hour sprint, ladies and gentlemen.